Hi everyone, it's me again, and Squish Gang is present. And today, we're gonna be talking about some tips in the makeup community, specifically with Jaclyn Hill and closing her brands, as well as Sunset Makeup versus Indie Beat Cosmetics and the kind of concept of intellectual property in makeup. Also, I tried to do my makeup on camera, this is my second take. It was terrible. I had this whole bit about the 2016 makeup, but that blah, 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 didn't work out. So here we are. <laughs> so but first, before we get into everything, links, socials, ways to support the channel, including Patreon and YouTube memberships down below, along with an Amazon wish list to support me and contact email as well as affiliate links to Every Jewels and Gerard Cosmetics, as well as everything else that I'm wearing on my face that can possibly be linked. These shimmers I'm wearing right now, are not from the Urban Decay Born the Run because those are awful, but we have uh, the Lethal Cosmetics ones. I don't have a code for this. Use code GARBAGE. That's the only one I can think of. That's uh, Teresa's Dead's code. And also, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Aura, and we'll get into that really shortly after I do the parts for the video. This video is a little more freestyle than my normal ones to a certain extent. I'm definitely going to have part one is going to relate to Jaclyn Hill and Jaclyn Roxanne and uh, cozy and that closing part two is going to be sunset makeup and indie beat cosmetics and then part three i'm just going to try to wrap it up with this concept of talking about how people relate under when they're smaller brands but the concept of camaraderie and also like the challenges that come in the makeup community so before we fully get into that i'd like to thank the sponsor for today's video aura thank you aura for sponsoring this video your personal information yours and mine probably and also everyone i love and all that stuff is online somewhere, including kind of personal information regarding your finances, passwords, all that kind of stuff. So there are people online called data brokers who seek out people's personal information or to sell them. Sometimes it's like for advertisements, sometimes it's for kind of scam callers, etc. Aura is a US-based service which serves as a one-stop shop for all of your internet security needs. This allows for you to know where your information is, to know who's accessed it and who's tried to access it as well, and allows for the prevention of spam companies, robot callers, and hackers from getting access to your precious information. I do not have access to it personally as a Canadian. This has to do with the credit check and VPN services that it has, where it relates to kind of Canada's banking system and stuff. It's just a bit different. So if you, I've had people ask why I promote it, but uh, despite not being able to personally access it, but it's because I just truly think that this is a vital and good service to have. And I would love to have it because as someone who's had their information compromised before, I got my channel hacked in October. I got email bombed in December or March. Girl, I don't even remember. Point is, I would urge for those who are able to access it to take the opportunity to at least try out a service where people can see their information. For those of you in the US, you can click on my link Aura.com slash Mika's Rhetoric to access the service or scan the little QR code on the screen. As an online content creator, these one-stop shops for inner security are vital to be able to safely do your job and have your livelihood secure. Or it gives you security warnings where your information is being compromised and also has other services like VPNs, credit score check, password management, identity theft monitoring, so many different things. And also protects you from malware, which I think is kind of fun and iconic. So again, for those of you who are curious, you can use my code aura.com slash Mika's Rhetoric to access a two week trial. Thank you Aura for working with me yet again as a dedicated sponsor to the channel. And yeah, let's get into the video. So Jaclyn Hill, part one, closing the businesses. So August 4th marks a huge day in like the beauty world calendar. Jaclyn Hill, one of the original moguls in the beauty community, closes two out of three of her businesses with the potential of Jaclyn Hill's cosmetic brand, Jaclyn Cosmetics, being the third to go. Jaclyn Hill's businesses and business practices have been controversial, to say the least, honestly, to sugarcoat it. However, I'm not going to go into all of that now just because I've already outlined it in my The Rhetoric of Jaclyn Hill video, which I'll link down in the description. Super long story short... She's been under fire for poor business practices for quite some time, and particularly with the initial launch of Jaclyn Cosmetics, but also with the two other brands, Jaclyn Roxanne and Cozy. Cozy drama started with a name being already taken by another influencer named Kaylin Nicholson under a marketplace called All Things Coast. 
So it's just uh, Jacqueline Hill's got like cozy and it's spelled the same way. And that's all that matters. Kayla Nicholson had had his marketplace for years prior. Not only that, Jacqueline Hill tried to kind of go off of the defense of trademarking and that it wasn't trademarked. Kaylin does address this and takes ownership for not trademarking and understands how this could have happened. However, I've been sent a receipt. Now, take this with a grain of salt, hypothetically, allegedly in Minecraft, as always. There's this other trademark in sleepwear that also has a K-O-Z-E name. It's on the screen now. You can see it. I'm gonna just let you discern that for yourselves. If I'm wrong and that's unrelated or I'm stupid and can't read, it's just there. But to my understanding, that's registered in 2018. So Jacqueline has faced accusations for Jacqueline Roxanne jewelry as well. For those of you who don't know, it's a sort of mid-range jewelry line. Like it's not like Claire's costume jewelry and as far as pricing goes. It's similar to like an Every Jewels uh, or a well, those typical kind of um, wet marketplace jewelry stores. I just can't think of anything besides Every Jewels that has the same aesthetic. So anyways, but the thing is the difference between like companies like Every Jewels and Jacqueline Roxanne, Jacqueline Roxanne's pieces range from typically around 40 US dollars a piece, which comes out to 50 Canadian dollars a piece. Every jewels tends to be around 20 Canadian dollars a piece, $15 a piece US. So just the price difference for essentially what looks like the same pieces is was jarring to people to say the least. Also, there have been allegations of stolen designs from Jacqueline Roxanne. There are tons of other videos outlining this. I can also link some in description if I find them. And Jacqueline, as everything that she ever does, she said it was like the greatest thing to ever exist. And like, we're so blessed to have her jewelry in our wit, in our midst, like, you know, whatever. And she said like, oh, you can wear these in the shower. They don't tarnish, blah, blah, blah. All of the jewelry in my entire collection is 14 karat gold plated or rhodium. And if you're unaware, rhodium is just a more high end version of silver. And the thing that was so important to me, two things in my collection that the second I started designing, number one, it cannot irritate my skin. It cannot give me a rash and it cannot turn my skin any color because I have had issues with really, really high end fine jewelry that literally like the earrings will turn my skin green and turn my neck green. I'm also very allergic to nickel. and I have extremely sensitive skin. So I I made sure that if you have sensitive skin, this is not going to do any of that to you. I have worn every single piece of jewelry. I have worked out in it. I have sweated in it to make sure that none of that happens. Number two, I made sure that this entire line is going to be amazing for layering because I know that a lot of people don't want to wear one necklace. You want to wear two necklaces. You want to wear three or four. So every single necklace that I created have little jump hoops on it. So you can have three different options as far as keeping it high, medium, or low. So if you want to like layer this one as well, you can throw this one in as well. Everything is made to layer, which makes me so happy. And then on and then like people wore them in the shower like once and they just <laughs> and a lot of people were saying that it turns them green. These are my like every jewels bracelets and I haven't taken these off in like a week. I've showered obviously and there's no green here. So that just goes to show you like even like way cheaper pieces like don't do that upon first use, I guess. I've had the anklet on for probably a couple months or at least a month by now. And like, that's not green either. So, and this is not like a shill for anything I saw. I also have other pieces from like winners and uh, like jewelry stores and stuff like that from like a family friend of ours. And like, I've never had something tarnish on like first wear, but apparently a lot of people were complaining first slash second wear or one time touching the water, the jewelry pieces were finished. Jacqueline Hill later in the video claims that they've addressed the cozy situation and messaged the Canadian influencer which I think is so funny because she won't name her, right? It's like, girl, is it me that you're talking about? The Canadian, the Canadian influencer? It's past 519, by the way. <laughs> but um, imagine it's like, we didn't even know, but she stole something from Simply Neological. <laughs> and she was DMing Simply Neological. That's a joke, obviously. We had an online digital platform called All Things Coz, and Coz was spelled the same way as my brand, K-O-Z-E. So at the time, I hired a trademark attorney to make sure that whatever name my team and I came up with for my brand was gonna be able to be used legally. We came up with over 100 different names, everything was taken. We created names from scratch, taken. Everything was trademarked until we came up with the name Cozy spelled K-O-Z-E. My attorney told me, trademark is open. It's all yours, great. Where I personally messed up as an owner, as a founder, as a CEO, was not doing my own due diligence on the social media side of things. I was not made aware that there was a smaller Canadian creator with an online platform that had that exact same spelling within the brand name. 
until we had placed an order for everything, for the blankets, for the robes, for the pajamas, for the socks, for the slippers. And that's when I was made aware of the spelling being the same. The second that I was made aware of the situation, my team and I reached out to her directly to try to make this right. And we never heard back from her. And I completely understand why, because I would be pissed off if I was her as well. All right, the situation sucks. I'm just giving you my perspective of what happened behind the scenes of the camera. So Kayla Nicholson, who actually addresses things, did talk about this in her community tab. It says the following. Hey, everyone. I made aware of the rehash topic of Coe's last night. And while I was an overtired cocktail of fury at how easily this could have all been avoided now that the name is dead and humor, partly in delirium after a year of attempting to be on maternity leave as a new mom while also unexpectedly and haphazardly doing an entire business rebrand, I slept on it so I didn't do anything impulsive. In reality, the anger I feel is just my own residual frustration towards myself for not trademarking before any of this happened and naively believing someone wouldn't do that consciously to a fellow brand owner within the YouTube space. Though it would be easy to project my bitterness in that direction, it really has nothing to do with the other person. Many lessons learned. My point of posting this, however, comes from the fact that none of my inboxes across my emails, personal info inquiries, inquiries and, business, and direct business or social media platforms have any form of contact in attempt to reach out about this misunderstanding. I'll give the benefit of the doubt that I could have somehow been missing the message, but I'm not finding anything anywhere. I'm on a social media app detox this month, otherwise I'd be posting this on Instagram or TikTok. If I'm honest, a very frustrated and annoying side of me wants to stitch together a lot of inconsistencies in the narrative now versus a few months ago when the brand dropped a show drop when the brand dropped and show a dive into my empty inboxes, but again, that would be just be projecting hurt energy and tossing myself further into the icky cocktail of digital drama. I know it won't do my karma any good and anything further than typing this would be a waste of my limited free time and energy. I just wanted to at least state that I never received any form of contact and I will now be going back to my relaxing thoughts. What a year. Nine months actually. Thank you so much for the support through it all. Cheers, Kaylin. The only correspondence with Kaylin I recall I mentioned this in my Rhetoric of Jaclyn Hill video was like an Instagram comment. Even then, I don't really remember if that was exactly what had happened. So I heard that with this Jaclyn Hill video, there was a pretty decent response when it initially came out. But then a lot of people were pointing contradictions out after the first watch, or some people were pointing it out in the first watch. There's the research stream for this video where I actually am pointing out all this stuff on the first watch. The main thing that is that she describes that there's this desire to be a brand owner. And this was not something that she actually desired. But then within the same video, talks about like holding up a lipstick and then going to an Ulta that some people are alleging never even existed and going, I wish it was my products on the shelf. So in the same video, she's like, oh, I had this brand owning dream when I still worked at Mac, but then I didn't want to do it because it was all my contemporaries doing it. But when she worked at Mac, Lunar Beauty didn't exist. The only brand that was existing, I don't even know if Jeffree Star Cosmetics was out yet. So there's just, no, because it was like 2011. So yeah, no, there was nothing to even go off of. So that narrative in general just doesn't even make any sense. Job at Matt Cosmetics and I worked there for four years. And when we weren't busy, all I would do was just stand there and I would mix blushes together and lip glosses. And I'll come up with different ideas and different products that I would love to create. And it never even seemed like a reality for me because I was working at Mac and I, I didn't have money at the time. Like it was just like an exciting dream, right? It was a pipe dream. Then YouTube came along and my dreams just kept getting closer and closer to me. I started doing collabs. I started seeing the revenue and the income that that was bringing in. And I was like, oh my God, I could actually, like my dream could come true. Like my little girl dream could come true. Like I could create my own cosmetic line. Like this is like insane. That I even had the resources and the ability and the, the following to have the opportunity to do. Like all of my peers, they all have brands. Like that's what you do. Like you create a YouTube channel, you get the income and then you create your own brand, something that can make you money going forward. And I looked around and I see everybody, you know, it's like Manny, Laura, Desi, Katie, all these people who are in the same space as me at the same time are all creating brands. And to me, it looks like they're thriving and I'm like, oh, I gotta do it too, I gotta do it too. And that's really another thing that I fucked up on and a decision that I made that ended up hurting me because at the end of the day, guys, I don't really wanna be a brand owner. I know that so many people thrive doing that. There's people and personalities out there that like, like a Kim Kardashian, like, I think that's what makes them happy is like just to like create more and more brands. And for me, that's not it. Like the so Jen Loves Reviews puts out this tweet where it says my subscribers are telling me that there was never an Ulta in Woodfield Mall when Jacqueline would have been working at Mac. If this is true, this is further proof that Jacqueline can easily lie and get emotional about something that she simply made up because Jacqueline Hill does shed a couple tears in the video. Well, you know, they're padded with the tissue to not run, but they're not really there. Or are they there? Who knows? Not me. The interesting thing is I also got a comment about that on the research stream from someone who lived in the area. And I didn't really think about it too much at the time, but I'm just like, 
Okay. So Jacqueline says that Jacqueline Hill Cosmetics or Jacqueline Cosmetics is also at risk for closure, saying that she has done the bare minimum to stay in Ulta. Peter Mon also brings up a great point in his video where he thinks that it was the issue of her persona actually not working out. She can't really be a bad bitch, so she's going back to being quirky and relatable by saying that she just wants to get back to makeup, which she's also said that a ton of times, then proceeded to keep opening brands, making her videos into ads and doing more business ventures. And she also doesn't admit that the main issue joining the two brands and also her brands in general often relate to intellectual property and stepping on other people to get what she desires. And with this, we kind of go into part two where we're going to kind of look at more makeup drama, I guess, for lack of a better term, but with two smaller brands and the sort of issues that that brings in out of fear of what happened with people under Jaclyn Hill. So part two, we do Indie B Cosmetics and Sunset Makeup. So here we're going to look at a more direct example of kind of this like intellectual property and makeup. So to begin all of this, a little over a month ago, maybe more by now, time is an illusion. There was this video going viral on Twitter of this person putting colored foundations on and they did not put the black one on their face. So like how they demoed them was they put every single color fully on like you would with a regular foundation, but the black, they just swatched it on their arm. Now, this is a white person who is non-binary. Just to clarify all of that, the point is a lot of the tweets were people replying like they will not be caught lacking in the sense of like they would not be fooled into accidentally doing blackface. That was the attention point for the makeup, not the actual makeup itself. Sunset makeup thus exploded in the online space due to this attention. This was not really the problem. There is a brand called Indie B Cosmetics that had the same sort of colored foundations. This means like, we're talking like pink and purple and orange and red. This is for SFX stuff. Now, some people ask me in my research stream what the difference is between face paint and colored foundation. Face paint is gunky and thick, kind of almost like the consistency of, it's really not a nice consistency. Foundations sink into the skin and leave like a more seamless sort of finish. The dish, the issue I would presume before is that these the opacity, because you shear out foundations quite a bit, even when they're full coverage, if it was to be like bright red, when it matches your skin tone, if you have a bit of unevenness, it's not that obvious, but I would presume obviously when you have like a crazy color, I guess that might've been why they weren't that popular before. NDB Cosmetics had these color foundations out for like a couple of years and people were contacting the brand owner, India, who is a black woman brand owner and was saying like, oh, this random person like stole your kind of foundations. And then Indie B Cosmetics got into contact with Sunset Makeup and talked about this. I'll also link both brands like shopping pages down below so you can kind of look around yourself. Another thing that was kind of interesting is the undercut price of the two products. So Sunset Makeup's foundations run 12 US dollars a piece, while Indie Beats runs 20 or 22, I can't remember, but something like that, US dollars a piece. Indie Beats while looking at the component and the product accused Sunset Makeup of stealing it, they talked and they seemed to have met a peaceful resolution and Indie Beats Cosmetics posted this little image. Sunset Makeup, however, did not post anything. This is something we need to remember. Everything was fine for a short period of time until Nikki Tutorials posted an Instagram reel where she featured color foundations. However, she doesn't say which color foundations they are. People noticed because of the text on the bottle that it was Sunset Makeup's color foundations. And a lot of people were commenting saying, it's a shame you didn't use Indie Beat Beauty's, Indie Beat Cosmetics foundations because those ones were the first ones made. This is where all the problems start happening. Sunset Makeup came out and said that they never stole it and that they came up with the idea through audience interaction, which is fine. But they start emailing back and forth, Indie Beat and Sunset Makeup. And Sunset Makeup starts just randomly claiming private label, which was very strange. The emails say, Sunset Makeup emailed first and said, hi India, it's Sunset Makeup and I'd like to have a discussion with you regarding the Nikki Tutorials recent post on our colorful foundations. I was under the impression that you and I resolved this issue and would stand up for one another, another if it got brought up again. This is the other thing. Sunset Makeup believes that Indie Beats should be standing up for them in the comments of Nikki Tutorials video. But Indie Beats is like, girl, why would I do that? Like, there's no reason to. So there's kind of a bit of dispute of camaraderie in the community. Also, I'm using girl like an exclamation. I don't mean that. Like, however, there are many comments on Nikki's post saying that, look, that I took your idea and your packaging, pretending to make it my own. I see replying to these comments, agreeing with them, instead of saying that we actually resolved this behind the scenes. 
I would greatly appreciate if you would clear up the accusations instead of agreeing with the comments. I do not deserve to have my own hard work be degraded. Thank you. And I don't see, like, there's not a lot of the proof of these comments, but so India replies, hey, the only thing I stated was we did in fact have the product for three years, which is true. I have not accused you of stealing anything in any of the comments. When I made the post saying we agreed to move forward amicably, you did not post anything about it. You stayed silent. I get tagged almost daily in posts about foundations because they are similar. I agree to not suggest you stole the idea from me, which I have not. It is not my responsibility to defend you. You're asking me to tell people to not believe what they see with their own eyes, and that's unfair to me. I didn't send anyone your way. I cannot help how the public feels. I wish you the best. Congratulations. Sunset Makeup then emails, Hi, thank you for the response. Are you willing to provide proof that your products are not private labeled? My manufacturer sent me the whole line of your brand new product, the Magic Dance Dual Chrome Glosses, with the exact same packaging and colors. Then India replies, I didn't say I didn't carry any private label. I said my foundations aren't private label. There are four brands with that lip gloss, some of which I'm friends with. I'm totally fine with that. Not sure what that had to do with the situation, though. Sunset Makeup says, Hi, thank you for the clarification. I recently reached out to my manufacturer for our colorful foundations, and they stated that Indie Beats face base is private labeled. That's what I'm having a difficult time understanding. If people are accusing Sunset Makeup of stealing the face base idea, we have every right to share the truth that both of our brands are private labeled. What does that have to do with anything? That's such a strange reach. And this is where you're getting into like those like Jaclyn Hill-esque kind of petty fighting components. Also, I got into contact with India. I have, here's a screenshot of a message I was sent or like a picture I was sent, sorry, where India is mixing the pigments at home in their kitchen to like send to the manufacturer for like a custom formula. So I don't understand. The thing is, is like the bottles private label, like the actual little like thingy that the stuff goes in is like a just generic component from China. It's not the formula though. And it's weird to random, like what does that have to do with anything? The Your problem was defending them. What does the private label thing have to come in with? That's obviously like, like you're angry and you're trying to like weaponize something. And it's also bizarre because of how large Sunset Makeup's current platform is because of the attention. That's not true, but do as you see fit. I have proof mine isn't. I'm done with this conversation though. Good day. That's what Indie Beats replied with. Sunset Makeup says, hi, as a heads up, we wanted to talk this out with you before we release our own statement. Unfortunately, we do not have proof that the face base is not private labeled. So we do feel comfortable mentioning that both brands are private labeled, including the statement from our manufacturer. So Sunset Makeup's just like, we don't have any proof of the contrary, but we don't really actually have any proof that it is true besides like a random statement from a manufacturer, which they don't tend to like leak each other's formulas anyways. So that was very strange. So India says, cool. All she said was cool. And then Sunset Makeup says, you do not have permission to share private emails with anyone. However, I looked it up. I know I'm not a lawyer, okay? Lawyers sound off in the comments, I guess, but there's no, unless there's like transactions of like personal information, there's no law that says you can't share the emails. And like consent to emailing is not the same as like verbal phone calls and stuff because you've put it in writing and sent it to them. Same thing, it's like you're allowed to read letters from people. And it's just interesting because it kind of brings forward this concept of what people's problem is with the beauty community and intellectual property where it is a very serious and complex issue, but then it kind of gets dragged down to these like weird personal beefs. And Sunset Makeup, I believe, kind of handled this like very unprofessionally. And arguably people could say with Indie Beats too with putting the emails on Instagram and the posts and stuff. But at the same time, it is so strange to me. Like I still can't get over the fact that like they're randomly like, oh, we're gonna claim it's private labeled. Like with what proof? Like what actual proof? Like where's the actual formula and everything that's there? It was very bizarre, but I'm gonna put all of Sunset Makeup's Instagram story addressing this sped up because it's super long. It's important I need to talk about because this is getting absolutely ridiculous and out of hand. So you guys know about our colorful foundations. They've been a very popular release. Many people on social media have been talking about it in a positive light, which I am so grateful for. I never thought that it would become this big thing. I'm just really happy with how it's been received. Um, but since the release about a month ago, a brand called Indie Beat Cosmetics has been claiming that I stole their idea, that I stole the colors and their packaging. Now, I did not steal anybody's idea and Jen Love's reviews made an entire video about this. I will link the timestamp and I will link the video in the next post so you can go look at it for yourself. So that video has both our statements in it, but I would like to release an official statement here stating that 
Anybody who has followed my brand since the start of our Liquid Foundations has seen that our Liquid Foundation release in 2021 has had the same exact generic white packaging. Anybody who has followed my brand since the start of our Liquid Foundations has seen that our Liquid Foundation release in 2021 has had the same exact generic white packaging with the same clear inside with the Sunset Makeup label on it. Now that release had our white foundation since the very beginning. And when I talked about our white foundation in videos, my Gothic customers were requesting, hey, the white foundation is super cool for like my Gothic, my Gothic looks. Do you think you can release a black one next? And then I released our colorful eye bases, which I marketed in videos. You can go look at my past videos as mixing it in with the white foundation to create your own custom color, to create a blue color, a pink color, a purple color. But I didn't like how pastel it looked because when you mix a color with white, it turns into a lighter version of that color. So I decided, you know what, instead of people mixing these two foundations and colorful eye bases with each other, mixing these two foundations and colorful eye bases with each other, let me just release a colorful foundation all in one. It's as if that colorful pigment is already in the white foundation. So that's what I did. I released it and I had absolutely no idea that a brand called Indie Beat Cosmetics ever existed. Now, regarding the packaging of our products, my manufacturer has already confirmed with me that this is the same generic packaging that all private label brands in China use. I have it on good authority that Indie Beat Cosmetics is lying about their products being custom made. They did already admit to me that their brand is private labeled, and I am fully open with the fact that my brand is private labeled. I have an excerpt on the FAQ page of the website of Sunset Makeup. Now, why is this being brought up again? Well, Nikki Tutorials made a video reviewing our colorful foundations in a positive light, and all the comments were being like, hey, this is actually Indie Beat Cosmetics face base. Um, Sunset Makeup stole this idea. Once again, I did not steal anybody's idea. And the thing is, India and I already discussed this via email a month ago when Jen Loves Reviews made her video about the situation. We had resolved this issue. We had both mutually agreed that we support each other's small businesses. Nobody steal from anybody, that it was just a complete misunderstanding and just, you know, it th things happen in like the private label world. And now Indy is not defending me when people are saying Sunset stole this idea. Um, so I emailed her and I said, why are you not defending me when we mutually agreed, like, let's not attack each other over this. Um, and now they're sharing those private emails with their audience, which I did not consent to. completely understand how unprofessional and petty and gross this entire situation is. I swear to you, I tried with my entire being to not make it a thing, to not publicly state, hey, this is what happened and this was a misunderstanding because it was a misunderstanding. And we talked about it in email. She made a public statement. She posted a month ago on Instagram and TikTok saying, hey, Sunset Makeup and I resolved this. We realized how unprofessional it is and we're all good. Stand by that statement. Where are those same values one month later? Why does this have to be, have to be brought up again? Why am I being dragged through the mud when something so amazing, Nikki Tutorial is making a video about me why, why do you have to ruin this moment for me? We talked about it. I just, I don't understand. I don't. I don't know how I forgot this. And I literally mentioned in the video that Sunset Makeup is non-binary for this exact reason. But Indie Beat Cosmetics India was presuming that Sunset Makeup was a woman and would use she, her pronouns. So she was misgendering them, right? And... Which is bad. Objectively bad. Okay. The thing is, for some reason, Sunset Makeup started claiming that India was in this group chat where she was misgendering Sunset Makeup for some reason. And I asked India about this and they outright claimed that this was not true. And I and also put a post on it, which I think you see on screen right now. I also have a statement where I asked specifically what they wanted to say about this group chat. So I asked verbatim, how do you feel about this claim specifically, which is a screenshot of the misgendering uh, claim. And they said, there is an India said, sorry, there is no group chat. I've never made a single personal attack on them. I've only defended my products. I don't know their sexuality and don't see how discussing that would benefit me. If you check TikTok, there was a previous situation someone else accused of bullying them. Now, I also asked another question where I just said, overall, what would you say your main issue is with this person? No admitting fault, no consequences, manipulative talking about it. What's your issue? India says the following. And India has given me permission to share all of this. I'm just not putting screenshots because their uh, India's phone number is on the top and I just don't want to like accidentally screw it up. So I'm just reading them. And India writes, my issue is not the apparent copy. My issue is that they want me to defend them from the public, making the comparison of the similar products. And once I said I wouldn't, they intentionally threatened to go public and falsely state that it's not custom made, that I'm lying about it. 
They try to tell me I couldn't tell anyone what was said in the email and is trying to make me appear to be misgendering and talking about their sexuality and other things that are completely unrelated. There are people commenting, saying I'm a terrible person for having a chat about them and it doesn't even exist. My problem is them playing victim and making me appear to be a villain. So that is India's statement. I felt like I didn't really like round this out as much as I would have liked. So that's what the situation has happened. If this chat is not real and India says it's not real to me directly in private messages, it's very strange for Sunset Makeup. I don't know where that came from. Same thing as the, as the private label. So now you're getting kind of into like almost borderline like slanderous territory. So I'm just giving the last piece of information that I knew. And uh, yeah, see you in part three. With that, we'll then move to part three. So part three, the current state of intellectual property in makeup. The two situations present sort of the opposite end of the same issues where Sunset Makeup and Indie B Cosmetics represents this reactionary result of being of a fear of being a victim to losing their product, right? Where you're hearing directly from the brand owners at the forefront as opposed to the person at the top being criticized by a bunch of people, as in some random big conglomerate being criticized by the online base, which is typically Jaclyn Hill. There comes conversations between solidarity between small brands that also stems from the fear of powerful being able to exploit them. And Sunset Makeup kind of acted under this assumption that that camaraderie exists, despite the fact that there doesn't seem to have been really an agreement as far as like defending one another, because that would kind of be... That could open doors for people questioning if Indie Beats has something to hide, if they're so willing to be like uplifting a product that they were not happy with existing in the first place. Now, people like Jaclyn Hill kind of exist in the middle of all of these things because as someone who used to be the little guy, but then turned into like a huge conglomerate, like capitalist force that was just stomping on people. And there's so many people like in the makeup community and like I kind of started hearing about it now that I'm like an influencer. Like Marlene Estelle brings this up all the time. Jen Gerard also brings this up all the time that like Jaclyn Hill would just use them for collaborations, for selling, for codes and stuff. And then just like left them to the dust. And that she did this with a lot of different people, a lot of collaborations and all that kind of stuff. Allegedly, hypothetically in Minecraft. And when this sort of gossip drives this loss of that relatable persona that they have so near and dear to them a lot of things begin to slip away which i've noticed causes more like grasping at straws and i find the straw that jacqueline hill tends to grasp is this concept of like happiness as a universal component of people's lives and there's something that everybody shares which is true i was reading this book earlier um jean vanier's made for happiness and it talks about how Aristotle said that like by all noble men have the same goal at the end of the day is this absolute happiness. Everything is done for this goal of absolute happiness. That is one of the only things that can mend bridges and can create connections. And I think Jaclyn Hill thinks that no matter how weak the premise is, no matter how weak everything is, it's just this sort of drive for happiness. And I think this kind of falls into this individualistic nature of Sunset Makeup and Indie Beast Cosmetics of trying to preserve their own brand and property and their own vision so fiercely because we're conditioned through our whole lives as young people in like the Western culture that we need to pursue our dreams. We need to do a job that we love. We need to be able to be successful. And with that is this sort of ownership of your own skill as opposed to your skills being able to uplift other people. And I think that like the beauty community has really fostered that nature in a way that I find to be very toxic and derivative of the actual like beauty of like an art form that I think is genuinely really cool and interesting and something that a lot of people undermine because of this sort of catty nature and individualistic form of people's intellectual property, people's egos and wealth, etc. So yeah, I think that's, and I think, Jaclyn Hill manipulates that the most and that's why people are able to point that out so much so to conclude thank you for aura thank you to aura for sponsoring the video very appreciated I loved that uh links sources way support the channel including YouTube memberships and Patreon and the Amazon wishlist and the affiliate links and yada 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 all down below along with a contact email for to suggest longer form content to sponsor me uh to you know say hi I don't know just no hate mail. Not nice. Okay. That's a heart, allegedly.
See y'all in the next one. Bye. Fun. What's the worst that I could play? He just blew up in my face. So long, my good mind. So long, my good mind. I gotta hit that shit though. <laughs>